Hey guys, and welcome to this Crazy Talk Animator 2 video tutorial on how to use the assets, the characters, the props, the animations in Crazy Talk for presentations, for business demos, and for slides and other stuff. So here I have an animation of a character jumping up uh, some stairs. Let me loop this again here. Click on the loop function, and then we can see this animation playing about. So previously in Crazy Talk, if you wanted to export something like this, you would have to select your character or your project, and then go up to the Export tab, and then to Images. You can choose something like uh, GIF, and then Sequence. But this would actually give you a collection of GIF sequences, depending on how long your animation would be. Um, you know, you can get up to 25, even 30 or 40 GIFs, and then you would have to need you would need another uh, software to put all these frames together to create an animation. Well, now in Crazy Talk Animator 2.1, we finally have the option to instantly export something, capture quickly capture something for use in a presentation. So, for example, let me go back here. Let's say I want to capture that moment there when my character is jumping at its highest, right there. I wish to use that in a presentation. Well now, I can simply select my character and go up to the render option, then quick capture to clipboard, and I could choose a transparent PNG, and I can, or I can also type, um, you know, press the F7 key, or function F7 on my Mac, and now this PNG, this character, this pose, will be saved into my clipboard. Then, I can open my presentation, here I have a PowerPoint, and I can paste this just like that. Okay? So, if I go full screen, you can see that I have a transparent PNG in my PowerPoint presentation. Now, Crazy Talk takes um, the, 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 the resolution, of the, depending on the resolution of the screen that you're using, Crazy Talk will sample from that resolution. So right now I'm running at 1440, I think. Let's see, 1440 by 900. So that's not bad. Um, I can actually do this. I could stretch out my character, make him big like that. And then I can do the same thing, F7. And you'll see the difference in the size and the quality. Here I'm going to just Control V, which is a, a paste. And you can see my character now. So this is a neat little trick where you can just expand your character like that in the screen and then quickly capture it. So let me get rid of the previous one and scale this one down a bit because we want to do the animation now. So this is for the transparent PNG. Let me undo this to go back to the original pose. Yeah, that's working. So let's say I want to animate this. I want to export the animation. Well, I select the same, render, quick capture, but this time I go to animated GIF or F7. And um, I can choose if I want to loop this once or forever or give it a special looping count. So let's just say forever here and I'll leave everything else the same. We'll talk about this later, the image quality and everything. So let me just export this. And now that I have it in my clipboard, I can control V and paste this. And you can see that we have our animation inside. Okay, but what if I want to get rid of that white background? What if I want it transparent, just like we had the PNG? Well, that's not a problem. You can guess what we're doing. Just click on transparent and do the same. Then we copy paste, and we have our transparent animated GIF inside of our PowerPoint. Really cool. Okay, so let me delete this one. Let me delete that one too, and bring this to the back. So besides being able to export uh, a character like this, I can also do the same for the prop. Remember that we have that prop that's being animated. So if I select both of them and I do the same thing, transparent, I'm sorry, not that. I want to do an animated GIF. I can choose transparent. I can export this. And now we can have both the character and the prop as one animated GIF inside of my PowerPoint presentation. And go in, control V, and voila. Very nice. Great. Now, the second thing I like to show you is what if I would like to optimize my background? Here, for example, uh, if I paste the same animation that we have, you'll notice that there's a, a small little white outline around my character. Can you see that there? On, around the character and around the prop. I can scale this up a bit so you can see it better. See that there? 
So this is because remember that I mentioned that Crazy Talk takes a screen sampling of the resolution that you're using. Well, it also takes a screen sampling of uh, the, the background color that you have inside of Crazy Talk. Bring this up a bit. Since the background that we have here is white, then you will see that little outline around my character and my prop, that little white outline. But we can correct this. So the best thing you could do is look at the, the color of the, present, of the background of the presentation that you're going to be using. And then in Crazy Talk, we want to go down to the project settings. And we would want to change the background color. So I can simply go down here, then background color and display, and I can choose a black color. OK. And now I can do the same. I'll select it, F8, animated GIF, transparent, and let's see. Then now if I paste this inside, you'll see that it looks much, much better because now we don't have that white outline. We have a little black outline and it's not interfering with, uh, with the background that we originally have. So besides, you know, it's not just for working on, um, on a solid background. If I have a colorful background or beautiful text like this, you can see that that black outline actually works well with it. Okay, so you can have a lot of graph, uh, amazing uh, images and HD graphs in the back, and then you can have your animation in front. And if you have that black outline, it'll help you blend the edge with, uh, with whatever you have in the back. Great. Now, uh, this is for uh, Windows, obviously, but if you export into Mac, there is a small difference, okay? With the Mac environment, when you save it to clipboard, uh, you won't be getting that animation. So here, let me s quickly switch over to Mac and give you uh, a quick look of how this works in Keynote. Okay, guys, so here we are in Mac. I'm going to open my Crazy Talk Animator 2, and I have my animation, or my, my character and my prop, and I have a, back, a black background here. So we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to open Keynote, and I wish to drop in that animation. Now, in the Mac version, we have several options. Uh, uh, I can use a transparent PNG as, it did, as I did before. I can also export as a transparent MOV and also an animated GIF. So that's the one I want to do right now. Uh, transparent, yes, image quality, and let's just export. Okay, quick capture to clipboard. So in, in the Mac environment, there's two options. Two things happen when I export. One, I save it to the clipboard. Two, it saves also to the desktop. The difference is that if you export an animated GIF and you just simply copy it from, from the clipboard into your keynote presentation, just like I'm going to do right now, paste, then this will not have that animation. Let me reduce the size a bit. I can play this. And you'll see that we have our project, but there is no animation inside. Okay, this is one of the things that we, we have to work with with Mac. So fortunately, Crazy Talk Animator will save this onto your desktop automatically. So then it's just a matter of drag and dropping that animated GIF file, bringing it in, and then you will have this animation. And I can play this back. And now I have my animated GIF inside. Okay, so in Mac, you also have some other options too. You can play around with this. So for example, I'm in movie here and I have the ability of, uh, you know, replacing this GIF using the control functions. And I can also choose if I wish to repeat or loop this, if I'm re repeating, if I want it to loop one way or back and forth. So right now it's just looping uh, the normal way, just, you know, straightforward. But I can stop this and I can choose loop back and forth. You'll see something cool goes back and goes front all by itself. Mac also gives us the option of being able to trim um, this animation. So here if I go to edit movie, I can go to trim and I can choose how long I wish to trim my jumps. So for example, maybe one jump, two jumps, one jump, two jumps. And obviously if I go into full, full screen mode, you will see that animation as I have trimmed it. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm not going to go into too many details here with Keynote because we're going to cover this in the next tutorial where we're going to talk about creating special effects both in PowerPoint and in Keynote. So that's the main difference with Mac. 
where if you export directly to the clipboard, you will not get an animated GIF. You will get more of a static PNG. And if you want to bring that animation in, then you simply drag and drop that from your desktop. Okay, great. Let's go back to Windows here, and we'll continue with the tutorial. Okay, so we're back in Windows here. And the next thing I'd like to show you is how to control the export range of your project. So let me go to my presentation here. Let me undo this. And I will control N. I will bring another project inside. I have an announcer that I'd like to use. This is the, the, these projects, these animations are some of the new um, presentation, some of the new assets that we have for the new presentation bundles. We have some content packs like the Mega Presenter. And these packs are actually designed with a lot of animations and characters and props that are ideal for any presentation. But we're going to cover this in another tutorial. We're going to show you how to customize these templates and these animations. So here, I'm going to play this back. I have an announcer. Okay, he's just yelling about. So if I want to export a specific range of my animation, I can do that. I can go up to render, animated GIF, transparent please, yes. And here we have something that's called the captured animation range. So if I open the timeline, open the timeline here, 3D motion, you'll see that this is my animation and it ends at frame 58. Okay, and if I play this, it'll just loop over because I have the loop function on. So you'll notice that inside the timeline, we have a little red flag right there at the edge. We have one at the, at the end and one at the beginning. Also, down here in the timeline, in the, in the window stage, we have two little red triangles. We have one at the beginning and one at the end. So this is what we call the capture animation range. Here we have the, the, the values for that, 1, frame 1, and frame 58. Now, I'm going to drag down on this red triangle at the bottom, the last one, and you'll notice, keep an eye on these numbers here, and also keep an eye on this little red flag up here while I move this. See, I'm going forward back, forward, back, forward, back. So I can adjust the range of my animation. So how is this useful? Well, here I only have one motion clip, but imagine that I had three motion clips inside. So then I might want to uh, uh, extend this, uh, this uh, the, the, the end of my motion clip, my, of my project clip, to encompass those three motion clips because I want to export all, all of them. Another way I can do this is simply by going into capture animation here in the um, in the capture panel and I can simply bring this value down or I can type in a specific number let's say 58 okay so that's just a little trick on how to export this I'm sorry how to adjust the animation range both in the timeline and in the render panel so obviously I can just export this and now that I have determined that range I have no problem in capturing one two three four five six you know as many motion clips as I'd like to use for that animation so I'm going to paste this inside and great let's go to the next part here the last part I'd like to sh talk is about is how to adjust the image quality the resolution so with Crazy Talk Animator, we have this part up here, this part that says image quality. So you can choose if you want image quality one, two, three, up to five. So we're gonna we're gonna test this out. I'm gonna go to one and I'm going to export this as it is. Hold up, let me bring this to the to the back. So it's capture range one to fifty-eight, transparent, yes, image quality one, and let's try this. And now I'm gonna paste this right about there okay and what I did previously before um, you know creating this presentation I right clicked and I saved this as a picture and when I saved it I looked at the size and this for this particular animation that has 58 frames um, the size of this animated GIF is 207 kilobytes now I did the same for this other one let's say I go up to image quality 3 and I render this. So I paste this inside. Let me minimize it a bit. Okay. And then I saved this as a picture. And the size it came out was 438. Now I can do this for the last one. 
I can choose image quality 5. Now at this point you might guess why I'm doing this and why you have the option of choosing the image quality. This is because of the size. Sometimes when we're creating a presentation it's very easy to get carried away with all these beautiful graphics and these beautiful photographs. And at the end if we're working on a 30, 30 page slide presentation we can end up with a 40 megabyte um, you know, 40 megabyte PowerPoint. And then it's extremely difficult to, to email this to someone because it's so large. So this is what we have the option. Notice that in the first one, image quality one, this is the quality that we get. Image quality three is this one in the middle. And then image quality five is the last one. Now we could see a, a big difference between number one and number five. We can even see a difference between number one and number three. But when we're comparing number three with the last one, number five, they look very similar. And if you look at the size, it's almost double. The first one is 207. The next one is 438. That's double. And then 719, almost double. So the, the, the best thing for us would be just to choose this one, the one in the middle. Obviously, this depends on what kind of presentation. If, for example, I'm just creating an animation like this because I'm going to use a small little icon, a decorative icon, something very small, then I don't really mind using a low quality one to save that memory space. So I can actually use this. If I'm going to use something that's going to cover half the, the, the size, half the height of my presentation slide, then I might want to use this middle one. Obviously, if I want the entire slide, entire full slide, then I could consider the higher quality one. But always keep in mind of those memory, those, those sizes of those files because that can really blow up your presentation. Great. So that's it for this tutorial on how to capture uh, PNG and animated GIFs for PowerPoint and Keynote. Please stick around. We're going we're gonna to have a series of tutorials designed especially for presentations and slides and demos. So watch those tutorials also. Thank you again.